Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and thanks for viewing this YouTube fly tying tutorial on Tube Flies Part 3. In case you missed one of the prior two episodes, I'll put links on the screen to those right now and you can go back and watch those at your own convenience. In the meantime, let's get started. Put down my coffee and to get started I'd like to just give a brief overview of the first two episodes. In Part 1, I examined an HMH beginner kit for tube flies. I went through some of the materials and talked about some of the possibilities for tube flies. With the gist being that I completely understand that the world of tube flies is just confusing at times and overwhelming. But if we, if we take it step by step and break it down, we can gradually begin to see the light at the end of the tunnel. In part two, I examined HMH rigid tubes. They are just a great all-around tube that so many tube fly tires and fly fishermen use that I felt that it deserved a proper place in the second of this series. In part three, I want to examine a few more areas of tube flies. For starters, I'd like to talk about HMH poly tubes. These are a little bit different than the rigid tubes because for starters they make various sizes similar to the rigid tubes. However, with the medium size of these poly tubes, they will attach directly to the hook eye. Let me just show you just to, for a, a quick 10 second tutorial on them. Here's a purple poly tube. It's a size medium. Now imagine sliding this on your leader tippet, tying on around a size 6 octopus hook, and then sliding it back down we don't have to worry about having any hook holder tubing. This material attaches directly to the hook eye. That's really a great thing to keep in mind. We don't have to worry about forgetting to place that hook holder tubing on it. And the beauty, you can see it's a nice snug fit, but still not too snug that whenever a fish attempts or takes this fly, it's going to hook itself as you set the hook and the fly is gonna remove itself and get away from the fish's mouth so no damage is done to it. Now, let's take a look at the small poly tubes. For starters, the first thing that you're probably going to notice is that they come in just a variety of really cool looking colors. Fluorescent pink, fluorescent yellow, fluorescent orange, and fluorescent green. The other thing that we have to notice though is that they come with some hook holder tubing. Right away, that kind of gave me the indicator that they probably wouldn't attach directly to a hook eye. I tried them on hooks down to a size 10 and they would not attach to that hook eye. So you do have to use this hook holder tubing with these small poly tubes. However, those colors really just led me into thinking about some just really crazy patterns that I could use for lots of different fish. I was thinking of steelhead and salmon patterns. I was thinking of trout flies to use during those off color situations whenever they have high water. I was thinking about patterns for salt water, especially striped bass. I mean, the possibilities really were just flying away. Now, whenever I thought about making this third video and thinking about what new topics I could introduce, I really wanted to go down that avenue of the striped bass. So I'm thinking about a clouser style fly, but one of the key characteristics is that we have some type of weight at the head to allow for that jigging motion. Enter HMH cone heads. Well, you're gonna see as I show you in this video that utilizing cone heads on tube flies is absolutely simple. I mean, it is completely crazy just how easy it is. Now the one thing that I want to mention and basically ask for your help with is that I'm going to be attaching these cone heads onto the tube and then burning to finish the head of the fly. I've heard that some tube fly fishermen will actually put the cone head on their leader first, then the tube, then the hook holder tubing, then their hook, and they just allow these cone heads to slide free, but they, they naturally come down and they rest above the fly. If that's true, I'd love to find out and if you have any experience with that, could you please just list it in the comment section of this video? Well, finally, before re-setting up the camera and showing you some close-ups of these materials, what I want to mention is that I've been receiving lots of emails and lots of just really positive comments in regards to tube flies. So if you're out there right now thinking, geez, I'm not sure if this is for me, should I jump in? Absolutely. There are so many fly tires that have really thanked me to say, hey, this is something I wasn't sure about, but this has kind of prompted me to give it that second look. I can really just be honest with all of you and say that I've been tying for over 25 years and I just recently got into this world of tube flies. I wish I would have gotten into it a decade ago. I didn't. That's fine. I'm definitely having a lot of fun with it, as you can tell. 
Well, with that said, let me set up everything and I'll start showing you close-ups of these before tying just the generic striped bass pattern. Before I start tying that generic pattern, let me just show you close-ups of these two poly tubes. The purple one is this poly tube. It's on the package, it's listed as a semi-flexible LDPE. I consider this one a medium, just to give you kind of a, a close up uh, and see how it compares to the small I'm gonna be tying on. Here's another small that's the fluorescent orange in my hand. Just a little bit of a larger diameter. Here's a size six octopus hook. You can see how it will easily slide over the hook eye. Now let me stick with this same hook. Here's some of the semi-flexible tubing that comes with the size small poly tube. And then at this point you can just simply slide that in. So you can see that they both are absolutely comparable. Um, they both come in a variety of colors. Uh, they really seem to be a nice product. And let me just go through a generic all-around fly that I'd like to share with you today. Well, I'm using my little starter kit vice adapter. What I did to start this off, I, I cut a little piece of section, and I can tell you from right off the bat, getting your proportions down is, was easily, for me anyway, one of the toughest parts of this entire process. So I've wasted a lot of material just trying to figure out exactly what size I want. I can tell you, whenever I'm tying a clouser style fly, I actually can use a lot less tubing, probably than I'm even showing here. But I, I guess whenever it comes down to video purposes, I, I do like to leave a little bit on the excess side for mistakes. Just gonna lift it up and I'm going to place this tubing because it's the small, I'm gonna have it go further in before locking it down. And let me show you what that looks like from the top. The reason I wanna have that further in is really simple. I need to really just keep a section of it clear no matter what because I'm gonna to need to connect it to my hook with that hook holder tubing. Now for this fly, it's not gonna really matter because it's all gonna be tied a little bit further up, but I always just wanna keep that in mind. It doesn't matter if I put a little kink in it whatsoever. All right, once I'm, I'm sure this is secure, I'm just gonna grab some thread. I'm gonna be using some uni thread. This is six aught red. I like the red for this pattern. You'll see why in a bit. Uh, it's gonna to relate to the gills. But to start this off, I'm going to leave just a nice little section up front. I don't have to worry about being really specific in that area, but I do want to leave a large enough portion to attach my cone head. Now we're going to put the cone head on at the end, but you want to just make sure that you have some material left over the, the end of the cone head so it will burn back over your, your finished head of the fly. All right, at this point, I'm just going to grab some just random material that I have lying around my desk. This is called some polar hair. It's just a generic material. It's a synthetic, it's a white. I use it a lot in place of uh, bucktail for clouser style minnows. It just looks great in the water and it gives off a nice amount of shine. Now the reason I like to stick with white, regardless of if it's gonna be the top or the bottom, for these tubes, I really wanna see that color in the center. Now there's a lot of great colors out there. Chartreuse is just one of my absolute go-tos for striped bass, for bass in general, and for a lot of saltwater patterns. I also love that chartreuse color whenever I'm fishing those off-color conditions for trout. I start with just taking a little section of it. I want to clump, this is going to be approximately four inches long. It's really going to be trimmed short, but it's okay to leave it excessive at the beginning. This is going to be more of my small cluster. I'm going to take a few extra fibers out of there. I don't want this build up too much. I'm going to attach it on the bottom. Now what's nice, I'm using the, my Stonfo Cayman. I can actually just rotate it a little bit. Attach it which will, in a way that will kind of be the top. Trim away these excess fibers. and then lock it down. Now the reason I'm having it go straight out is because I wanna bend it back, but I wanna build up this section right here. I'm gonna be able to do that whenever I bend everything back. The next piece I wanna do is I just wanna add the head of the fly, the top of this fly. In this case, I'm just gonna to return to that same material, though I'm gonna get a thicker clump. I want it to be a similar length. As my scissors go flying here. So I'm just gonna cut 
really similar style. Tie it on top this time. Get those butts out of there. Now at this point, I want to stop and mention that if you watch a lot of tube fly tying tutorials, you'll notice a lot of guys will use uh, super glue at this point. And that's because they don't want all these materials turning necessarily, and they want to make sure they're locked securely because we're dealing with plastic here. Now, am I going to recommend that? Not in every instance. If you're fishing for those real predator fish, we're talking tarpon, musky, they're very toothy, there's a chance of them just really destroying these patterns and getting all these materials kinked around, then absolutely add some type of a glue. I would not discourage you against it. In this case, I'm locking in this material this way, and then I'm going to be bending it back and locking it in again. Thus, I know it's going to be very secure for my purposes. All right, the next component of this fly is going to be some type of lateral line. And we already have a chartreuse color in there, though I'm going to stick with another one. I'm going to be using this frosty fish fiber. It's a, just another nice chartreuse color, and it's going to extend a little bit longer than that tube. That's the main reason why I want to use it. I know that tube is going to be giving me uh, really some, some nice looks, but I want to just make sure that if I keep this fly longer, that I have it extended and I really have that nice chartreuse going back quite a ways. So just like before, I might cut a similar clump to the prior ones. And I only need a few in here. All right, and, and that's it. Now, before I finish this fly, uh, I want to mention there's lots of other materials out there um, that I really would recommend in these situations. Just some nice flashaboo. Really, those small strands work very well with these. Uh, I, I absolutely love red. I think that's just a great look in the center of any fly or coming over the top of a fly. Uh, this blue is just an absolutely wonderful color. Uh, this is just some type of a crystal flash, a generic one. Uh, sometimes I'll add this in first. And then whenever this comes over, you'll have that blue going over the top of the fly. It just really gives it a nice look, especially in salt water. Here's some hanked light bright gold. Again, this is like a thinner cut flashaboo. And then finally, this is, I mean, this is just something that I picked up at a random fly tying show. It's a lot like that, like Antron, but it's mixed with some type of really fine crystal flash. It looks very similar to the this material that I'm using right now. It's definitely just a little bit mo more movable in the water. What I want to really just illustrate is that there are lots of different materials out there for you to use. All right, well, to finish this off, I'm just going to bend them back, lock that in with a couple wraps. I'm going to move this over, do the same on the bottom. And now we have a pretty ugly looking head, and it's pretty large. That's typically a sign that you got a beginning fly tire, unless you're going for that large head. And in this case, I am. What this is going to be representing is a really nice red gill section. That red could mean an injured bait fish. It could just mean the gill section on this, we'll say, imitative bait fish that I'm attempting to tie. So I got it at this point. Put a nice little whip finish. I might put in a couple. And that's it. All right, the next part of this, I'm going to remove just this metal tube. So I just loosened it a little bit down here. I'm going to make sure that the fly stays in. I'm just taking this metal tube out. I'm actually going to tighten this tube into my um, my hook holder just a little bit. No, I don't want to kink it or anything, but I just want to keep it there. Next, I'm going to go back to my, my cone head, slide it over. And you're going to see what exactly what I was talking about. Let me zoom in just a hair. We have a really nice red gill section directly behind that. Now, we have some options whenever we go to burn this in. If I burn it right away, what could happen, that hole that's on the end may disappear. And if it does disappear, not to worry. And I'll show you how we can fix that. But to finish off the head of this fly, really simple at this point. I'm just going to take a lighter. I'm 
and voila. Let me blow it out. While it's still warm, I'm just going to take this, stick it in the center, and make sure that I still have that hole to get my line through. Now, you can see that uh, that cone head is not going anywhere. Once that metal or once that plastic fully dries, we are in for an absolute, really just fish worthy fly. Now, let's get back to this fly. If you notice, I can pull it out now. And this tail section is really uneven. I just want to trim it, make sure it's all around the same length. Don't have to worry about being too creative with that. And here we have our finished fly. I'll just set this on top of my vise. Let me turn the camera just a hair for all of you. So you can see this was just ab an absolute down and dirty. This is a quick bait fish imitation uh, that is just quick to tie and is going to work really well. I can promise you of that. I showed you those other materials just to stress that you can really go with any color combination you want. But I'm sure right now, if you're as you're watching this video, you can see that that fluorescent uh, poly tube really just shining in the center. When this white material gets wet, it's really going to allow that green to absolutely shine through. Other modifications that that I've included, or we'll just say revisions to this pattern, you can take some type of peacock material, put it over the head, use that blue flash over the head, or basically figure out exactly what bait fish you're attempting to imitate and add those components to this fly. Well, whenever I think about fishing this, we're just going to move all this material around. I have my hook already attached to my hook holder material. I'm just going to slide the hook holder material onto the hook, and there we go. So I'll grab it right here. You can see that hook just kind of showing through, really in not a prominent location, however. The beauty of this fly and the beauty of this system is that we can change the size of that hook at any point. If while we're fishing we realize we need a larger hook, we need a size two, that's fine. We can simply just pull this fly forward, take off the line attached to our hook, tie on a larger hook, slide this back down, and reattach it. It's really that simple. And we can do it from the other perspective, put on a smaller hook. The other great thing about this, and this, I'll be mentioning a few more of these in my later videos, but for starters, whenever you're carrying this fly, you don't have to worry about a fly box. As I mentioned at the beginning, I believe that there's a lot of fly fishermen out there that fish tube flies that keep all their tube flies in Ziploc baggies because it's just that simple. You don't have to worry about a hook sticking out. You can just throw them in a bunch of baggies and go. You don't have to have a thousand flies in all of your fly boxes, just adding so much weight to your pack. The other beauty with this system is that whenever we have these streamer type flies, because there's no hook, say I'm fishing and I realize that there's some really small bait fish in the water, I can simply just take my scissors and trim this back and make those modifications on the water at that moment based on what I see going on. Well, with that said, I'm going to finish this video. Uh, I really do appreciate you watching uh, this series on tube flies. And again, if you haven't watched the first two, I recommend going back and watching those. Uh, I can promise you we're going to have some other really great stuff in the future episodes. I have at least four more planned. So this is going to be approximately a seven video series. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below on this YouTube page. Or as always, you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. If you'd like to watch more of my YouTube fly tying tutorials, please check out my website, which is troutandfeather.com. You can also like it on Facebook. Thanks, everybody, and I really hope you enjoyed Tube Flies Part 3. More to come.